This video was sponsored by Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. <laughs> oh, hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made these cabinet doors, which are eventually going to be for a whiskey cabinet I'm working on. But the doors, they kind of took a long time, and I, I, well, I ran out of time to show you the whole whiskey cabinet. Truth is, I haven't even started on the whiskey cabinet yet because I got distracted on the doors. So I built the doors for this video, and next week I'm going to do a video on the whole whiskey cabinet. But for now, if you want to see how in the world I made these doors without a CNC, completely just with my hands, well, and power tools. When I say with my hands, I mean my hands holding tools. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Watch the video, see how I made the doors, subscribe down below. There's links in the video description to all the tools and everything I used, and enjoy. For now, I just gotta pretend that these doors are attached to a cabinet. Oh, and pretend that I'm whiskey, okay? I'm whiskey. Just because you have an idea, and it seems simple in your head, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to turn out that way. I had this idea for some cool lattice-inspired doors, mixing walnut and white oak, and in my head, it seemed pretty straightforward and simple. I'll show you how I started out, and, well, I'll show you where I ended up. They are not the same place. I started out by cutting down a scrap piece of walnut and a piece of white oak. Now, smartly, is smartly a word? Or is that a real dumb thing to say? Anyways, smartly, I decided to do this on a smaller scale before I went full blown on my full size cabinet doors, on the off chance that it didn't work. And I'm really glad I did, because, spoiler alert, it didn't work at first. Anyways, after cutting down my pieces of white oak and walnut, I got a straight edge on both sides and I planed them down to just around, oh, three-eighths of an inch thick. Ideally, I could have resawn these on the bandsaw, but I don't have a bandsaw that can resaw stuff at the moment. It's on my to-buy list. I just haven't bought one yet. Anyways, after getting the walnut and white oak planed down to three-eighths of an inch thick, I used some double-sided tape and I stuck them together. Because I'm going to drill a whole bunch of holes in them. And I figured it would save some time if I drilled the holes in the walnut and the white oak at the same time. But in order to get my holes laid out in a nice uniformed pattern, I needed to draw out a grid onto the top of my piece of white oak. So I drew out a grid onto the top of my white oak. I basically broke it up into two inch by two inch squares. Then I grabbed my CMT Forzner bit set and I searched for a good size bit to drill said holes. I didn't want to go all the way to the edge of that two inches because I wanted to leave a little bit of a gap in between holes. I settled on an inch and five eighths. Then I took my walnut and white oak and I stuck it to a scrap piece of plywood. This is just a backer board so that I don't blow out the back of the walnut as I drill holes through the top. Then I just started drilling a bunch of holes. Now my idea was that I would take the white oak on the top and I would offset the walnut on the bottom and it would give this really cool intricate pattern that kind of looked like lattice that I could use as a floating panel in a cabinet door. So after drilling all my holes in the white oak, I separated the white oak and walnut from my backer board and I separated the walnut and the white oak from one another. And then I tried to do what I had originally thought would work in my brain. The only thing is, I really didn't like the way it looked. Number one, the walnut was too bulky and big, and I didn't like that it sat behind the white oak. I felt like it just got lost back there. That's when I decided that for it to really look good, I needed the walnut and white oak to be on the same plane which meant that I somehow had to cut out the walnut pieces and inlay them inside of my white oak circles. So using my white oak, I traced out the shape of each circle onto the walnut, and then I headed over to the chop saw. 
to begin individually cutting out each walnut piece. I knew right away this was going to take forever. After going to the chop saw, I went to the band saw and very painstakingly cut out piece by piece by piece. At this point, I decided to not even fill in all the holes that I had drilled for my test piece, which meant that when it came to the actual cabinet doors, I wasn't sure that I wanted to do it this way. I mean, seriously, this is going to take a long, long time, I mean, like really long time. Because after I cut out the pieces on the bandsaw, I had to refine the cut over on the oscillating belt sander. I mean, I got some pieces in there, and I will say it looked a lot better now that everything was on the same level. But I still wasn't super happy with it. I cut down my little sample piece so that I could isolate it and get a better look. But even after that, I just wasn't thrilled with the way it looked. It was really hard to cut the walnut pieces uniform and consistent. And even though it kind of had a funky handmade look, I just wasn't thrilled. I thought perhaps it was that the walnut was still a little too bulky. So I hand sanded each piece down to make it a little thinner so that the holes around the perimeter were bigger. But this made it even harder to get all the walnut pieces exactly the same size, which meant that my pattern inside, although it looked much better now, still wasn't uniform and consistent. And that's when I came up with another idea. Instead of individually cutting these pieces out of a flat sheet of walnut, what if I mill up a solid stick of walnut in that shape? So I grabbed the biggest cove bit I had from Bits and Bits, and my idea was that I would hit one corner, then the other corner, then another corner, and the final corner. And this should give me that same star shape that I was getting by hand cutting each individual piece out, but because I'm doing them in a long stick rather than a flat sheet, well, I should get a lot more consistency from piece to piece. So I went over to the router table and I started testing out my theory. I was a little nervous because the piece is kind of small and the cove bit was big, but it was so stinking sharp I had no problem doing the entire thing in just one pass. And I was also a little nervous that by the time I got to that fourth cove, well, things would get a little shady and the piece would be all wobbly, but that didn't seem to really cause an issue because there was always two solid points of contact, one on the base of my router table and one on the fence. So even on that last pass, it was pretty easy to run the whole thing through and get my final shape, which looked much better than my hand sanded, hand cut out ones. So I was pretty stoked. And I also managed to make the world's first solid walnut churro, which was a pretty cool accomplishment. Next, I needed to just slice this thing up like a stick of salami, and I should be able to wedge all these pieces into my test piece of white oak. Pretty soon, I had a number of these perfectly symmetrical walnut stars, and now all I had to do was set them in place. The key is when you mill up your solid walnut stock, you have to make it exactly the same width as the diameter of your hole. Since I did an inch and five eighths and my stock was an inch and five eighths, what do you know? It fits and it looks pretty darn good. Now I just have to make this on a much larger scale. Time to do the real thing. So I started out very similar to the way I started my test piece. I cut some white oak pieces up. I went over to the joiner and got a nice straight edge and then I trimmed them down on the table saw. I'm basically gonna glue up a panel of white oak pieces that will essentially make up the floating panel for my cabinet doors. There's gonna be two doors in total, so believe it or not, I need two panels because that's math and it checks out. So with all of my pieces for my two panels, I squeezed some glue in between my seams and I clamped them together. I didn't worry about biscuits or dominoes because I'm gonna plane all this down to 3 8 of an inch thick and I would run into those biscuits and or dominoes. I also didn't really care about my seams lining up too much because, well, I'm gonna send all this through the planer so it doesn't really matter. After letting my glue dry an appropriate amount of time, 
I took my two panels out of clamps and I sent them through the planer, planing them down to just around 3 eighths of an inch thick. I want my final thickness to be a little thinner, more like quarter of an inch, but eventually I'll send these all through the drum sander again once I have the walnut pieces in place, so for now, 3 eighths is just fine. Then over to the miter saw to square up both ends so I had uniform pieces I could make my panels out of. And then very similar to the way I did my test piece with the white oak and walnut, I decided to use double-sided stick tape to hook my two pieces of white oak together so I could drill the holes in both panels at the same time. Because there's going to be a lot of flipping holes, and I really don't want to have to drill all of them twice. So, double-sided tape for the win. Now the one thing I really wanted to change from my sample piece to my actual final panels was I wanted my grid to be on a diagonal instead of straight up and down like a checkerboard, which meant that I had to draw my squares at a diagonal, which meant that I needed a lot of reference lines. So I basically had to draw out graph paper like grids onto my panel so that I could get everything lined up at a diagonal or diamond pattern as you can see here still doing two inch by two inch squares. I then marked the center of each one of those squares and I used a little punch just to get a hole started. This will help me line up my Forzner bit with exactly where I want to drill each hole and make sure everything stays very nice and consistent. After getting all my holes marked out and tapped with the punch, it was over to the drill press to spend the next eight years of my life, if I'm lucky probably more like 10. Anyways, I started drilling holes and drilling holes and drilling holes. By the way, these CMT Forsner bits are available on my website for purchase and they're on sale. So head over there via the link in the video description and get yourself some. They're awesome. 35 days later, I managed to have all my holes drilled Unfortunately, that was the easy part. Now to make a zillion walnut stars to go in each and every one of those holes. Oh boy. Here we go. boop a doo rocket man Looking at Tom Cruise photos on my phone Oh, hi! This video is sponsored by Rocket Money, which is why I was singing all the right words to Rocket Man. You ever have something that you just really want to save up for, like a car or a house, or maybe a yacht that was once owned by legendary actor John Voight? Well, I have, and Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance app that allows you to save more, spend less, and it's the perfect way to get all your money right in the new year. Don't believe me? Well, let me show you how it works. So Rocket Money allows you to manage subscription, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings all right here on the app. The cool feature about this is the unwanted subscriptions. I didn't realize I was still subscribed to Daily Cat Picks, and I have been for six years now. Why am I not getting those? Anyways, I can manage all those subscriptions so I'm not paying for monthly things that I forgot that I was paying for. Another really cool one is that it monitors your credit. So if somebody down in Louisiana tries to take out a high interest loan for a new car and it wasn't me because they stole my identity, well, I'll find out right here on the app and I can make sure my credit score stays intact. The other crazy thing is that it helps you lower your monthly bills. And what I mean by that is it shows you your monthly bills and then there's a little button you can push and it will actually negotiate with those companies to lower your bills, like our cable bill. You just click a little button, they'll negotiate with the cable company and get you a lower bill, which is awesome. So if you wanna save more and spend less, join the 3.4 million members already using Rocket Money. And check it out, I've got the hookup. You just go to rocketmoney.com slash bourbonmoth to get started for free, or you can click the link down there in the video description. And if you wanna unlock even more features, you can get the premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash bourbonmoth to get started for free. And get your money right in 2023. With our oak panels done, well, a bunch of holes drilled in them. I mean, they're far from done. It was time to make up our corresponding walnut stars, for lack of a better word. So I milled up a bunch of eight quarter black walnut. 
because I needed it to be thick to get a square that was an inch and five eighths by an inch and five eighths, which I was able to do. You also want to make sure to mill this up so it's very square, so you get consistent star-like shapes. Now, I wanted the little tabs or points to the star to be a quarter of an inch, roughly. So because I was dealing with an inch and five-eight stock, I took 11 16 inch setup block and I just rotated the piece and drew a bunch of lines. And if you're wondering what I'm doing here, well, I'll show you right now. Basically, this gives me the points to each one of my stars. So all I have to do is set the cove bit to cut from that point up to that point. That's a really bad looking cove, but don't worry, it'll be perfect over on the router table. I started out by just testing a piece to make sure the shape was consistent and looked exactly like I wanted it to. So I just did the tip. Just the tip of the, just the tip of the, the walnut blank. Um, anyways, as you can see, it worked. It was the correct shape. It all looked even and uniform, which meant I could now run the entire thing through on all four sides. This is kind of like deja vu. I mean, you already saw me do this once, but this time it's for real. And I didn't just do this to one piece. I did it to four pieces because I didn't know how many star-shaped little slivers I was going to need. And the last thing I wanted to do was get partway through my project and then have to go make more. So with my walnut churros made, next I needed to figure out a way to cut them consistently. Now they don't have to be perfect because I'll send the entire thing through the drum sander when I'm done, but I did want them somewhat consistent. So I took an off cut from my white oak and I used it to mark my sacrificial little sled on my miter saw. Now I should be able to bring my walnut churro right to that line and if I do that every single time I should get somewhat consistent little salami slices. Kind of like this. Now this might have been a little repetitive but let me tell you it was way faster than hand cutting each little one out from that flat panel the way I started doing it at the beginning of this video. But you know what wasn't faster? was the fact that now I had to individually glue every single piece of walnut into each cutout circle of white oak. And there just really wasn't a fast way to do this. So I put on some Enya and tried to get into my happy place. And I just started going. As you can see, it went pretty quick. I mean, I'm about 45 seconds into this particular clip and I've got one piece installed. But luckily for you, I can speed up the footage and it can get done a little quicker. For every single piece, I used a paintbrush and a little pot of wood glue. This cool little silicone pot, I got at Rockler and it's a great way to hold glue when you just need little amounts. It's also got a lid, so you can just store glue in here. Anyways. I painted glue onto all four little tips and I hammered it in place. Between the glue and the fact that it's a very tight friction fit, I don't think these walnut pieces are gonna go anywhere. So 65 days later, I managed to get all of the walnut stars and every single one of the white oak holes. Next, I took both of the panels over to the drum sander and sent them through until boom. They looked nice, huh? I mean, that surprised even me. I knew it was gonna look cool, but I mean, that looked pretty cool. At this point, I was getting really excited. So excited, I didn't even mind giving it a final sanding because, I mean, it worked and I was stoked. Now all I had to do was make the frames for the actual cabinet doors. So I grabbed a little rift sawn white oak, I planed it all up nice and pretty until I had some nice straight pieces of stock, and I decided to do a mitered border for these cabinet doors because I didn't really want any mortise and tenon or anything taking your eye away from the beauty of the panel within. Sounds like a fortune cookie. So I cut up all my pieces over on the miter saw until I had a nice mitered border frame thing. 
Next, I needed to use this frame to figure out what size I needed to cut my panels down to so that they would fit inside my frame. Now, obviously, I couldn't join the frame together yet because then I'd never get the panel inside. So, temporarily, I just taped the frame together so that it would kind of stay in the right shape. Then I took my taped together frame and I just set it on top of one of my panels. I just moved it around until everything looked nice and even and spaced out the way I wanted. And then I used a pencil to mark exactly where the frame was gonna land on the panel. Now I want the panel to sit inside of that frame a half inch. So I used a setup block to mark off of that pencil line a half inch. This will give me the final size of my panel. I know that setup block says a quarter of an inch, but I'm using it on the opposite width. So it's a half inch, just trust me. Then with my panel all measured and marked, I went over to the table saw and very, very carefully cut it down to the right size. I was kind of worried the whole thing was just gonna explode in my face at that point and all that work was gonna go down the drain. But luckily for you and me, it did not. And I managed to get both panels cut to the right size. And then I thought I deserved a snack. Nom nom. Next, I needed to cut a groove on the inside of each of my frame pieces to house said panel. So I set my blade height to a half inch because I'm gonna have my panel sit a half inch into that frame and I use my table saw to cut out a groove. Of course, one pass wasn't wide enough for my panel, so I had to do two passes. Well, I did one pass on every piece and then once I got one pass done on every piece, I used a scrap piece to move the saw blade over just a little bit and I kept doing this back and forth and running it through until I got a nice snug fit on my scrap piece and then at that point I was like, oh, perfect. And then I finished up the rest of my pieces until I had a nice consistent groove that would fit my panel. Next, then I decided to test fit my panels and make sure that the frame would come together and I didn't have to slim my panel down at all. So I test fit my panel inside my frame pieces and it fit, so that's good. And both doors were <laughs> looking pretty good. I know I keep saying that, but I'm just tickled with the fact that this idea is actually working because a lot of my ideas don't work. So when you get one that does work, you gotta be happy about it. And that's when I realized, holy cow, I gotta put finish inside every one of these tiny little holes. This is a stupid idea. So I grabbed some Rubio Monocoat Walnut and a pile of Q-tips. My original thought was that I was just gonna have to use a Q-tip to get in every single nook and cranny, but that was taking forever. So then I decided the easiest thing to do, which actually worked really well, was just to use a lot of the Rubio oil, like more than you actually need, and just let it run down in every one of those holes. Just really goop it on so that it just saturated the top and was soaking down into all those little cutouts. After I did the front, I flipped over and did the same thing on the back. I mean, using an excessive amount of oil. I know that's a little more expensive, but it was the only way I could ensure that there was oil inside every hole. Yeah, I just said oil inside every hole. Okay, pull your mind out of the gutter. Now the problem is, once I got the oil in there, I needed to get it out. So over to the compressed air gun, and I just blew it all out. I mean, it didn't consistently get it out, but it got the majority of the oil out, which saved me a lot of time. And who cares if I get Rubio on my floor? Big whoop. Then all I had to do was take a clean Q-tip and rub it inside each hole. I said, pull your mind out of the gutter. All right, seriously. Now my intention was always to be able to see through the panels into the cabinet. But once I got finish on the panels and the walnut darkened up, it became pretty much the same color as the shadow behind it, which made the panels look like just white oak with a bunch of brown polka dots, which I did not like. So I needed to do something to really make that pattern pop, which meant I needed to put a backer onto that lattice panel. 
Hopefully something that was brighter in color so it would really accentuate those walnut stars and make the pattern just, yeah, reach out and grab ya. So I cut down some pieces of quarter inch white oak plywood that were the exact same size as my, you know, walnut and oak lattice pattern. Now this is gonna be the inside of the cabinet door, so I finished it with the same Walnut Rubio on the back side. But obviously I didn't wanna use Walnut Rubio on the front because I wanted something that was gonna brah, you know, bleh. So I got some paint. Now don't freak out, all right? Just think about this. This is gonna be a fancy, schwanky whiskey cabinet. And what says high end better than bright orange. Am I right? I mean, you may think I'm crazy, but I really think this is going to look pretty darn spiffy with that white oak and walnut. Or I will hate myself forever for making this color choice. But it was late, and I didn't think about it very much, and so we're just going with it. Now I also had to sand the back side of each of my panels so that I could get the oil off so that I could get glue to stick to the panels. So I did that. Then after my white oak plywood painted orange was dry, I brought that over, set it on a Rockler silicone mat, and I laid down my lattice pattern on top. Now I know this is my project and sure I might be a little biased. But I think that looks pretty darn cool. I mean, in my own humble opinion, I think that looks sweet. Next, I wanted to just put a little tiny bit of glue on the back side of my lattice pattern so I could glue it down to my plywood panel. It doesn't need a lot because it's kind of going to be sandwiched together inside of my frame. So I just put a little teeny dot on all of my stars. I didn't want to put too much because I didn't want to squeeze out. And then with my glue in there, I set another piece of plywood on top of both of my panels and I put a bunch of things on top of them to weigh them down. And while the glue dried, I went over and started working on the joinery for my cabinet door frames. For the joinery on these miters, I'm just going to throw some dominoes in each corner because it'll make it nice and strong. Eventually I might come back and put some splines in each corner. But if I do that on the doors, I'm gonna to wanna to do it on the actual whiskey cabinet itself as well. So it's gonna be a lot easier if I cut all those splines at the same time. So for now, it's just dominoes. When I was done mortising out my dominoes, the glue had had enough time to dry, so I pulled off all the heavy stuff, and ooh, ah, panels. There was just one problem. Remember that groove I cut in all my frames? Yeah, I measured it for just the white oak and walnut. So it was a little too skinny. So I had to make it a little wider to fit my now much thicker panel. So back over to the table saw to cut a little bit off on each side. So I ran each piece through one way, flipped it around and ran it through the other way until my slot was wide enough to fit my panel. And now it was time to glue everything up and be very, very careful not to get glue onto my pre-finished panel in the middle there. So I was sparing with my glue. I mean, I put a lot on there. I just didn't put a lot right towards the inside where it would squeeze out all over the panel. I put a lot on that front corner and just a little tiny bit on that inside corner. Now, for a long time, I didn't know the best way to clamp up mitered frames like this. That was until I discovered these strap clamps. Now, I was skeptical on these for a long time. I am in no way sponsored by Pony. These are Pony brand, but I have to say, I give credit where credit is due. And for clamping up mitered frames like this, these things are awesome. They give nice, even, consistent pressure around the entire perimeter, and I like them. So. In no time, I got my first door all glued together and my second one glued up as well. And because this is a YouTube video, ta-da, the glue's dry and I pulled them out of clamps. And I was so happy that everything was coming together, I didn't even mind sanding the frames. You just gotta be really, really careful because you don't want to accidentally sand that panel on the inside. Careful, Jason. 
calm down. Now, I was gonna put Rubio on the outside of the frame, but then I thought, you know, I might still add splines to each one of these corners, so I'm gonna hold off on Rubioing the outside until I have the actual whiskey cabinet done. Now, I know it's a little weird that I built the cabinet doors before I built the actual cabinet itself, but I knew they were gonna be complicated, and I am glad I got them out of the way. Oh, I gotta tell you, if I never drill another hole in my entire life, I'll be happy. That was a doozy, but we got it done. Were they exactly how I had pictured in my head originally? No, absolutely not. But that's the cool thing about having ideas and figuring them out is that you just make it work. And sometimes you make mistakes and you learn from those and you move on. And sometimes what you come up with is cooler than what you originally even thought about, which I think is what happened here. I cannot wait to build the rest of the cabinet to go with these doors come back next week and you can see the entire project put together with the whiskey cabinet and the doors and there'll be whiskey in there and I might drink some I might have already drank some okay where did I put my glass <laughs>